Hey everyone, how's it going? It's your boy Skilled Fawn, and today we are going to be doing a Dark Souls 3 challenge run. Let's waste no time and get straight into the rules. Starting off, we can only use sorceries. Using a staff, we will be able to cast various spells. Better sorceries slash spells are granted as the player levels up. More on this throughout the challenge. Next, we must beat the main game. Afterwards, we must defeat all bosses. This includes the main game and the two DLCs. Lastly, glitches and or exploits are allowed. So expect some cheeky and abnormal ways to take down bosses or get around areas. I'm excited to share this with you guys as this is one of, if not my favorite Soulsborne games. It's currently tied with Elden Ring since the DLC came out, which was phenomenal. Make sure to like, comment, and or subscribe if you haven't yet. Without further ado, let's get into the run. We start off by fighting Undex Gundir. This is a great introduction to the game and what's to come. I could have made this fight easier since you can actually parry him with your offhand without having a shield equipped. Regardless, for me, I have his moves down fairly well, and the damage output is good enough to take him down quickly. Once we take him down, we restore our ember and get a slight health boost. Because we took Undix Gundir down, we are able to go into Firelink Shrine and talk with the various NPCs. Here we can teleport to Highwall of Lothric, our next area. Progressing through the level, we eventually find ourselves in front of Vor of the Boreal Valley. This boss can easily take the player down if they aren't careful. Making sure we have enough distance as possible, we keep slamming him with spells. Soon we'll need to get more powerful sorceries since bosses health pools will become much bigger. Eventually we take him down so let's keep going. We climb a tower and befriend this giant who will help rain down arrows from his perch. Then we go take down a demon with the help of a friend. Afterwards has to be one of my least favorite bosses in this game which is Curse Rotted Greatwood. This was a frustrating and long fight. This was because most of its various attacks and weak spots made things take a lot longer. This fight was actually fairly tough with sorcery only and so I'm curious to see what other bosses will give us trouble like this. With pain and determination we take it down and receive the transposing kin which will allow us to get boss rewards from their souls. Subsequently, we find ourselves in front of the first Lord of Cinder, which is the Abyss Watchers. These guys are such a fun fight, and that phase 2 transition just slaps. The tough thing was that this boss likes to jump in and go for quick melee attacks. Luckily, we picked up a few sorceries that will give us a flash blade. This will be really useful. Once it gets into phase 2, things are a bit harder since his attacks are infused with fiery flames and explosions. Doing similar dodging and pathing as the first phase, we take him down and acquire our first Lord of Cinder Soul. Because we took down the Abyss Watchers, we are able to head into the Catacombs of Karthus and progress through its winding tunnels and chambers. Here we find two paths to progress. One leads toward the Old Demon King down below, and the other is blocking the way to Anor Londo. These are both fairly easy and straightforward bosses. Carefully planning when not to attack and rolling through the pain, we take them down. Afterwards, we head into Irithyll and towards Norlando. Unfortunately, I forgot to get the doll item. This lets the player actually enter through Irithyll's gates. Because of this, we are going to backtrack a little bit and we head towards Crystal Sage and dear god, this fight was tough. I believe the Sage is heavily magic resistant, so the fight took a long time. And, you know, that would make sense because he's casting a bunch of sorceries, so it would make sense that he's slightly magic resistant. It was tough at times because I had to manage my flask correctly, which would generally leave me with less heals, regardless of the pain and suffering we endure through and take the sage down. Because we took down the sage, we are able to head into the Cathedral of the Deep. Here we take down this boss that will jump from body to body until near the end. At the halfway point, the High Deacon will come out and start to inflict more powerful sorceries on the player. Thankfully, we have the Pestilent Mist spell, which was a great choice for this fight. I highly recommend using this if you are doing a sorcery only run. Any boss fight with one or more enemies can be really tough, and this fight is no exception. Though these enemies don't look all that daunting, when they attack in unison, things get really tough. After some time, we take them down and acquire the doll. Now we can actually go through Irithyll. We take the bridge into Irithyll, passing the beast that devours time travelers. 
Heading into one of my favorite bosses in DS3, we equip a shield to parry him. Now, if you remembered from the beginning of the video, I actually could have parried him without the shield. His dual swords are so sick, and I'm happy to see that in Elden Ring DLC, they have a similar boss with Relana. This fight is about making sure we have ample distance, and then when he tries closing the gap to either parry or roll out of the way, Phase 2 gets a little bit more tricky since Pontiff will summon a spectral version of himself that will lead his attacks. I really enjoy playing through DS3, especially around this point because a lot of my favorite bosses are around this location. Eventually we take down Pontiff. Afterwards we find ourselves near Aldrich, Devourer of Gods. This is the second Lord of Cinder and the second to last is also close by. With Aldrich, the toughest part about the fight was the low damage. Luckily, I was able to manage it using the Pestilent Mist in combination with my other sorceries. This way, the Mist will be stacking up damage while I rain down hell for my staff. While this fight was rather tough, we eventually persevere and head towards Yorm. Entering the Profane Capital, we have some very excited guests. At the end of the capital, we find Yorm, this massive giant. Usually in a playthrough, the player will grab the weapon next to his throne and fight him. This fight is very similar to Storm King in Demon Souls and Rykard in Elden Ring. Luckily though, the sorcery damage to his head is sufficient enough. It does take a bit of time as I have to time my attacks with his, manage my FP as well as possible, and try not to get hit. These were tough, but we managed to get through his fight and take him down. Subsequently, we enter one of, if not my favorite bosses in DS3. It's really hard for me to choose and lock in a top 3 since so many Dark Souls 3 bosses were perfectly developed. Regardless, he is definitely up there in my personal rankings. Phase 1 is fairly easy, just lock on and spam the dragon or drake's head. Super easily we send him into Phase 2. Now this is where things get really interesting and fun. Nameless King is a very agile boss with a plethora of slow and insanely fast attacks. The biggest obstacle for veteran and new players are these slow and fast melee attacks, and so we will have to be very cautious. It was quite scary since we used a lot more flasks than I hoped for, and had a few close calls. Thankfully with skill and a bit of luck we take him down. Because we took down Yorm and the other Lords of Cinder, we are able to progress further through Lothar Castle. At the very top we find two brothers, Lorien the Elder Prince and Lothric the Frail and Younger Brother. Even though Lorien may not have his legs, he is still an extremely agile boss. Phase 2, the younger brother will join in and will revive the both of them until he alone is defeated. This makes the fight a bit trickier, but definitely doable. Just make sure you are attacking when you can clearly see his backside. And, you know, I made sure to, <laughs> when I attack, just to do those. And, you know, occasionally I would miss, but every, if not most, attack should hit through the both of them, and we eventually take them down. With all the Lord of Cinder Souls acquired, we are able to take down the last boss of the main game, which is Soul of Cinder. This boss will utilize various builds that players will recognize from previous games such as DS1 and DS2. The best is when he switches to the Mage class. This lets the player get a ton of attacks in. Phase 2 Soul of Cinder has very similar attacks to Gwyn, the first linker of the flame found in Dark Souls 1. This was a perfect way to tie all the games together and provide a fun experience for the player. We take him down. Next we link the fire and complete the main game. Now let's head on over to the DLCs starting with Ashes of Ariandel. Talking with the NPC located at the Cathedral of the Deep, we are able to enter the snowy landscape. Talking to the various NPCs and then progressing through the world will eventually yield a boss fight at the end with Sister Frida. One thing I should note for those unfamiliar with Soulsborne games is that these DLC bosses are scaled much higher than the main game bosses, and so they hit like trucks. Thankfully, we have played through her fight enough where I am able to recognize many attacks, but still will get caught off guard from time to time. In her phase 2, her father will join the fight. Frida will go to a supportive role, allowing her father to be the aggressor. This is great since Father Ariandel is weaker to every form of damage and status effects. Phase 3, the final one, is a surprise for sure for newcomers, and this is when the anime moves come out and Sister Frida can really mess the player's shit up. Carefully dodging and trying to not get too aggressive, we continue to fight. 
The variety of tax can be tricky, but we manage to press through. With time and patience, we take her down. As we head into the Dreg Keep, I want to quickly say that not every boss will be shown in this compilation, but I have gone through and taken them down. Some fights I feel are not as important to show, such as the wolf boss from Ashes of Ariandel. If you are interested in checking out that fight or my full playthroughs for my challenge runs, be sure to check out the VOD channel where I post the full streams. Getting near the first boss of the Ring City DLC, we plunge into the depths. Here we find two demons ready to take us down. Focusing on one of the demons will generally make this fight easier. The demon prince fight can be quite chaotic due to the two demons you face initially, but once they combine into the demon prince the real challenge begins. Utilizing our sorceries we focus on dodging and casting at opportune moments. It takes patience and precision, but eventually we take them down. Moving further into the Ring City, we encounter more enemies and some of the toughest enemies in the game. Finally, we reach Slave Knight Gale. Gale is a relentless and aggressive boss with multiple phases. In the first phase, we use our sorceries to whittle down his health while avoiding his wide-reaching attacks. The second phase introduces even more devastating attacks and requires us to stay on our toes. The final phase, aka the third phase, is up there if not the most difficult with Gale becoming even more ferocious. With careful dodging, strategic casting, and managing our resources, we eventually defeat Gale. We reach the last boss fight, Dark Eater Madir. This dragon is infamous for his deadly attacks, making it a true test of our sorcery only run. Dark Eater Madir may have mid in his name, but he is far from that. The key here is to aim for his head and dodge his devastating attacks. It's a long and grueling battle, but with persistence and careful timing, we bring Madir down and bring the DLCs to a close. With all the bosses from the main game and DLC defeated, our Dark Souls 3 Sorcery Only Challenge comes to an end. It has been an incredible journey filled with intense battles and fun gameplay. If you enjoyed this run, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more runs and gaming content. Thanks for joining me on this adventure. Try to do something kind for someone today, whether it's a small or large gesture. This is your boy, Skilled Fawn, and I'm out.